as mentioned, histones and nucleosomes are both a solution to how to fit a large amount of DNA into a much smaller nucleus. But they present their own set of problems, and that is that if you have very tightly coiled and tightly wound DNA, it is very difficult for it to be replicated and for it to be expressed via transcription and translation. And to that end, there's a lot of regulation involved in the expression of this coiled DNA. And we've come up with two terms, heterochromatin and euchromatin, to describe the two states of DNA in eukaryotic cells. Heterochromatin is the DNA that is wrapped around histones, which are then converted into eight unit nucleosomes. And heterochromatin is very tightly wound and it's consisting of extremely packed nucleosomes. And this makes it less accessible to the polymerases necessary for replication and transcription. So it's highly compressed, which is good for fitting into the nucleus, but it cannot be expressed. Euchromatin is the unwound form. And this form can be transcribed and replicated. The way that I like to keep the terms straight in my mind is that heterochromatin, which, which starts with an H, is very hard to replicate. It's very hard to transcribe, whereas euchromatin is much easier. And notice that this is only a problem that exists with eukaryotic cells because those are the only ones with the membrane-bound nucleus and the histones that allow for this packing or coiling. When you deal with these two things, you might encounter a term that shows up in a lot of different places in biology, and that is constitutive or constitutive, which refers to something that is always in that state, that's always expressed that way. You can have constitutive heterochromatin that is always in the heterochromatin densely packed form. And that is something that will not be expressed. It won't be replicated and it won't be translated. Whereas other things are facultative. Facultative means that it can be heterochromatin that's tightly packed or it can be unwound into euchromatin. And once again, these are distinctions that only exist in eukaryotic cells, but it's important to be aware that some will always be in this form, whereas others will only be facultatively in that form. And recognize that if you can control the degree to which DNA is wound or unwound, that allows you to control the expression of that DNA be it by replication or by transcription. And so there are various factors that allow us control over that process. Things that favor euchromatin, the unwinding of that, are acetylation of histones. So if you add an acetyl group to a histone, then that makes it less tightly wound. It loosens the interactions between the DNA and the histones and between the histones and each other. And by doing that, it loosens that and thus allows more of the polymerases access. So if you have acetylation, that favors euchromatin and thus that favors the gene being able to be transcribed and thus able to be expressed as proteins. Heterochromatin has the opposite regulators. If you deacetylate it, if you deacetylate the histones, then that favors heterochromatin and it reduces the expression of those areas of the DNA, the areas that are now packed much more tightly. And another thing that can happen is if you methylate those histones. That is another factor that gives you control over the expression of genes and thus the expression of proteins and can help you influence the way that the genetic code is expressed physiologically.